Hey developers, today I'm going to go over six hot tips that I found on Twitter for you guys. These are just little snippets of code that I found useful that are great references and good things that you should know if you're a web developer here. So make sure you watch all the way to the end and you can learn all about them. I'll make sure I also put them in the description below. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full stack software developer. I have uh, several years of software development experience. I'm also an author. And uh, before we get started, I just wanna have a quick shout out. A buddy of mine, Thomas, he actually has a couple of courses on React. I'm actually trying to learn React, so I thought this would be interesting for you guys if you, you're interested. He has a beginner to intermediate React course. It, you basically create a, a, a whole movie database application. So this is what it looks like. Uh, this is all using, you know, the latest, greatest technology. This is all CSS Grid and, and Flex, Flexbox. Uh, it's using the latest version of React with React hooks. He even actually goes over the class-based API, uh, class based API, if you guys are interested in that as well. But it's mostly just hooks. And so you create this this uh, page. It connects directly to the movie DB. You can even, I don't know, you can type stuff in. It sorts for you. It's doing this, it's all connecting to a database. You can have this load more here. So it actually it's loading directly from the server. You can click on any of these options to bring up the titles. It's fully uh, responsive, of course, too. So he shows you how you set it up on that way. So it's a neat little project. Uh, it's, it goes, it's pretty involved. It goes in all the modern steps of React. So I thought I would tell you guys about it. I'll put a link in the description below. Just make sure you click on that, and if you do, I'll I get a few bucks if you end up buying the course. But yeah, it's the Beginner Intermediate React. Pretty solid course, I would recommend it. All right, so let's go and talk about some hot tips. So these are six hot tips. I just kind of went through the last few months on Twitter and just pulled out a few that I saw that were coming up. It's actually kind of hard to find these tips unless you follow these people and you just happen to see it on their feed. They usually get buried pretty quickly and just trying to search through Twitter is not easy. If you guys, if anybody knows a quick way of, of finding some of these hot tips, uh, leave a link in the description below or just uh, let me know in the, in the description below how you find your hot tips. I found when I was searching through Twitter, most people just link to their own Medium articles or their own blogs which I don't think is helpful because what's cool about Twitter is that you can put in a screenshot like this, as you can see on the page here, really easily. And so you don't need to uh, link to a, a complete different article for it. So this one's just really simple. So West Boss, you guys all know who West Boss is. He creates a ton of different courses. He also is on the syntax.fm, syntax FM podcast. But so he, he always says these hot tips. Here's one of them I found, uh, this one's actually pretty old, it's in 2015. But this is uh, returns first element selected. So you do this, you can make uh, a dollar sign and you do a document dot query selector dot bind and then you put in the document like this with the parentheses. And then you can use it like this. So you can get the first element selected by just almost like using jQuery. You know, you can put the dollar sign and then pass in the, the actual string as like a method in there and then it'll return it. And if you want to do a return array of selected elements, then you can use query selector all and then bind it to document as well. And he put double dollar signs to do that. So yeah, it's kind of a neat way to keep kind of a neat way to do things. And I thought that would be my first tip I should show. And, and if you just look at West boss's profile here, he just has tons um, and tons of different tweets and things. He's a good person to follow. So check him out. Uh, here's another one I found recently. This one's a little bit more new. It's in November of 2018. So if you're trying to add or remove multiple classes from an element, an array spread is the perfect use case here since class list.remove requires multiple arguments. Instead of it passing one ar array argument, it passes each item of the array as a separate argument. So the way you did this, so I can click on it, make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, so you can see here on the screen here, he has a function forward. And then he has this list of classes, previous, current, next, and you can do remove and you can do the spread operator for classes um, for previous, current, next. And then you can even do this for each way of removing classes. So yeah, just a neat way of, of removing the classes and, and doing what you need to do. 
And you can also, the nice thing about these tweets is you can see what everybody's talking about under underneath there and seeing what um, people think about. All right, so let's look at another one. This one's a little bit easier. This one is if, if you ever need to loop over an object in JavaScript, take a look at the object.entries method, so much more readable and, such, and less gnarly. So yeah, so it looks like this. You can add, you know, obviously it has its own property. If it has the key, then you can log the key, but you can, this is kind of the one way of doing it, var key and object. But if you do object.entries, you can do a for each on it and then uh, do the property key and value. So yeah, ni nice little tip using object.entries. I don't use that too often. I think I use just key and object most of the time. And then I like Kyle here. He said, for double the win, use array destructuring for your for each so you don't have to reference it by index instead of item you can put in the bracket key comma value and do something there so yeah another little tip there object.keys interpreted cumbersome as well i mean i'm on board with entries method but it feels like object keys is more than minimal so yeah so object.keys i've used that before too to go through your objects yeah so just a couple different ways to do it and so here is another javascript hot tip if you're populating an array dynamically, be careful to initialize every item with a new reference. When fill gets past an object, it will copy the reference and fill the array with references to that object. So yeah, every array item refers to the same object, wrong. So if you do like const person array five fill the object, then uh, it'll refer to the same object the wrong way. The correct array is initialize every item with a new reference. So so instead of you doing the fill null here and then you map it and with the object in each one, you can see how he does it here. So yeah, quick, quick little tip. Uh, I don't use fill too often, but it's, it's pretty easy to, to do. And okay. So here's just more of like different ways you can do uh, JavaScript string methods. I always have to look these up when I need to do complicated things. So of course includes, you can check to see if the string includes this in there. You can split it. I use split all the time. That's an easy one. Slice um, does not mutate the string. So it returns the substring, which is nice rather than I think splice is the one that actually mutates it. I always get those two confused. You can do to lowercase to uppercase. I think those use, I use those a bunch. Replace is, is nice the characters and string starts with I've used that before too just to check the start of a string ends with I don't use as often char at you can get specific chars and repeat so yeah so this is you know a nice little way, uh, little tip there to remember all that and the last one I hear is properties keys versus e6 map the main difference is property keys can be either can either be a string or symbol maps allow objects to be a key because key one and key two are coerced to a string they become the same property key so this is a little more complicated. You can kind of see here an object property can only be a string, but you can see here it creates an object and then you can put the key values in there. And then a map can use objects as keys, just not strings. So you can kind of see how he does it with the map with set, sets and gets. So yeah, a little more complicated, but you know, nice little tip. And you can see kind of the conversation behind it as well. All right, so those are my six quick Twitter tips. I love to hear your guys' web development tips. Leave a comment below. Let me know what they are. And if you have a time, I'd love to hear uh, what you guys think of this course. You know, check out this course. Like I said, the link will be in the description. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it if you check it out and let me know. And as always, I also uh, have some Udemy courses in the description below. So if you guys want to get caught up in the latest and greatest on Udemy, yeah, make sure you check that out as well, so thanks everybody, take care.